Hey everybody, this is AJ and Joel. And this is Forever Your Guru. This is a new segment that we're going to be doing. Uh, we'll probably do it about once a week. If we need to, we'll do it a little bit more. Uh, this is going to be called just straight up candid. Okay, this isn't us scripted or running through a whole bunch of stuff in the game and playthroughs and all that kind of stuff. This is actually just us kind of talking about what's gone down in the past week as far as possibly some of the stuff in our lives pertaining to video game things like that or electronics, what's happening out in the real world with video games and electronics. And uh, kind of some of our opinions, we'll rate some things. Like today we're going to be doing some stuff on... Uh, what do we think of first impressions of some of the games that we're playing through? Uh, the Switch, uh, you know, the the whole the whole controversy about uh, the 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 whole amiibo play to play to win kind of thing going on in Zelda right now, which is so sad if you don't have the extra money to buy those amiibos because oh my goodness, man, do you get a lot of stuff? But all right. We're going to just kick in right with it. Uh, I'm going to ask Joel some questions, and then after Joel answers, I'll give my opinion. Um, and uh, you will definitely see how different our opinions can be sometimes. But uh, right away, Joel, um, okay, Nintendo first said that the Switch was supposed to be some type of ultimate portable hybrid type of thing where you got close to the best of both worlds for being a, a home console and a handheld. What would you say to that? To that promise not not all handheld not all console but does it do well enough as both of them to live up to that expectation what do you think well you're not gonna be sticking it inside your pocket anytime soon but it does perform very well as a handheld whenever you're uh, you're just lounging on the couch or something like that. that's true and if you dock it it, it I've, I've had zero problems with the uh, with lag and latency and such as far as uh, playing it docked sure sure Okay, yeah, um, I, I, I'll agree with you on the handheld thing. Um, it's amazing as a handheld. I think it's great. Um, I, I have no problems with it. The screen is beautiful, guys. If, if, you, if you are thinking about a handheld and you want one, uh, don't go get a 3DS. Get the Switch now. Just invest in it because you're going to end up getting it in the future anyway. It it's really is that beautiful. It works. It's flawless. I would really honestly say as a handheld it is flawless. Uh, it has plenty enough battery life for what it needs. And with the USB-C not being a proprietary thing, you can always plug it up to a battery pack. You're, you're good to go on that. Now, as far as the console part, I have a little bit different than Joel does. Because most of my console gaming, because I am not doing the Let's Play on that. So my Wii, my Wii, wow, oh my gosh, I'm dating myself. My yeah, Switch. I'm calling it a Wii. <laughs> Yeah, right. On the Let's Plays. It's so Amazing. hard to get out of it, man. It's so hard to get out of it. We've had Wii and then Wii U for so long. Um, but the Switch, um, you see, my, my Switch, my primary TV that it's on, is a 4K. Okay, And it is, um, it tells itself very badly on a 4K television. Um, the artifacting is horrible. In most places, and, and we're going to be talking about Zelda Breath of the Wild a lot. Because let's face it, it's the only really big title that's out for the Switch right now anyway. Um, but most of the time, whenever you're playing it, the artifacting is bad. And if you don't know what artifacting is, it's the whole jaggy line thing around everybody. Uh, some type of little particle effects, which are those like <coughs> stray, stray little pixels that don't seem that they need to be there. That kind of take away from the game clarity. That's all around whenever you're trying to do it. And then one thing that I've noticed especially is after playing more than a half an hour at a time on the Switch, if I go into certain areas, like maybe, maybe you've seen this, I don't know. Um, when I go into certain areas with a whole bunch of grass and trees and next to a cliff, sometimes the game judders. It's like it's really trying hard to render everything, but maybe Nintendo should have just said, you know what? We need to keep this like the Wii was and the Wii U was and just say, you know, 720 is good enough. Let's try not to make this thing hit 900p in this one really taxing game and then kind of ruin that, that experience. Because I tell you what, guys, there's nothing more unimmersive than staring out at some of the beautiful scenery that Nintendo has had and then hearing something behind you turn around and then it just sits there and it judders as you spin around. And it's, it's very noticeable for me because it's not like the game slows down. It actually just skips frames because 
it can't hold up with the amount of detail that's actually happening. Yeah, I, th I, th I think that might just be an issue with the with with your TV and the Switch interface because whenever I'm recording, I'm strictly on my computer monitor and it records perfectly through it. Yeah, I've I've had zero stuttering issues with it at all. Well, there we go. There we go. Maybe that maybe that is something. Maybe that's something that Nintendo will be able to patch out in a uh, oh, in a we, future we thing. Definitely hope. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. Okay, so um, what do you think? Um, what what would you rate it as as the uh, the complete package in between it, like being uh, as, portable and? As what they're selling it for. Yeah. The portable console. Yeah. Yeah, I I say it's probably a, a as of now a seven out of ten. I really like it as a portable. Yeah. And for what I'm using it for, the console mode works really well. It it flows very well with uh with how I, how I have everything set up. Sure. Good enough. Good enough. Um, I don't. I don't know right now if I'd give it a, a seven out of ten. I'd probably give it about a six out of ten. I know the Nintendo fanboys out there are gonna hate me, uh, but truthfully, I have that issue uh, with the juddering, which means that they definitely have some some problems. And it's not like this is my only console, guys. I've got the PS4. I've got the PS4 Pro. I've got the Xbox One, and I've got the Xbox One S. Okay, we've had them all. None of them judder, except for my poor Switch. So it's obviously some type of firmware issue that'll get patched out soon. I hope Nintendo is actually listening to some of the other guys that are complaining about this. But as for me, I would probably say as the whole package, I'd give it a 6 out of 10. Um, I think it has some great potential, but until that potential gets fully realized, I, I just can't give it any higher for me. Oh, it has amazing potential. Um, there's actually Switch patents out there that Nintendo has uh, already filed for to make it a AR and a VR gaming machine. No telling if Nintendo is actually going to follow through on this, but I'd be, I'd be interested to find out. Yeah, I think I think that would be great. Um, because if they could add VR, and we could get a solid 45 minutes of battery life out of VR, uh, that could be a game changer. Because that would be true portable VR. Because um, some of the things that we were talking about before the Switch ever came out, Joel and I were was uh, some of the same things that everyone was talking about, like um, is, is there extra processing power inside the dock? And that is a big, huge no. Okay, I'm going to give a shout out to one of my favorite guys around. His name is Ben Heck. He's been tearing down electronics uh, for probably as long as I've been alive, guys. Um, <clears throat> and he tore down the Switch dock, and seriously, it's a chip no bigger uh let's see gosh i'm i'm looking at some stuff around here in the room okay if you look at the uh the nintendo uh let's see yeah the switch uh joy con take one of those joy cons cut it in half and put them on side by side and that's all the chip that's inside the dock guys i mean it's almost nothing Yes. It really is just a USB to HDMI converter. That's that's strictly all it's there for. Charging your uh, your your um, peripherals while they're docked. And and the and, and the, uh, the USB uh, yeah the USB hub. That's that's all that's in there. Um, <coughs> other news in that teardown, <coughs> he found out guys that um, the memory is uh, it's not even soldered to the switch. It's just a little chip connected by a ribbon cable. So um, third-party people might be able to rig on to something about that, about being able to help us out. And also guaranteed probably by Christmas or early next year, you're going to be seeing some Nintendo Switches out there with massive amounts of storage. So that might be a reason to kind of hold off if you haven't already got one yet. Just see what's going to come out. Because I'll tell you one thing, it's really, really small storage. Because by the time you're done with everything, you have less than 25 gigs of actual usable space. Because they're going to format part of it for the actual uh, operating system and any future updates. But at the same time, it's no problem to go ahead and just buy a uh, SDHC and go ahead and slap that up inside the, the bottom of it. And it, uh, I, I, I put one in mine. Mine's up to almost 200 gigs now. Yeah, um, that's true. Um, and the way that they're formatting the games, it shouldn't be a problem. But in the future, if they're going to try to do something that's really taxing, um, onboard memory is always faster. Always. You know, so so we'll, we'll see where that goes with that. Um, okay, so as as a strictly portable, what do you think it ranks as a portable? As a portable? Take, take the whole console aspect out of it. What do you think? As a portable, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. 
I, t I just honestly can't get used to the way that the Joy-Cons feel docked onto the side of the Switch. Mm -hmm. And then whenever I have just the Joy-Cons in my hand, I got big hands, guys. It, uh... <laughs> Joel is a big guy. <laughs> these poor little Joy-Cons just get lost. Yeah, Joel and so, I are both over six yeah. foot, so we're uh, we're definitely in that that whole category of uh, it. It is a little small. The Pro Controller really does make up for that, though. Uh, I'll I'll give them that. But it's not. Yeah, you, you kind of take a lot of the portable out if, if you, really if you have to do. Yeah, you ought to do tabletop at least for that. Um, now you see that's where that's where we're gonna differ here. I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. Um, I'm very adaptable, um, and and I took to the Joy Cons like a lot of other people have. Um, wow, in the playthrough right now, wow, that kid is just such a jerk, man. He threw a rock at me. Gosh, dog, I hate <laughs> that guy. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it, well, I'll, I'll change that. Probably a 7.5, 8. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go full 8 out of 10. Um, I think it's a great system for being portable. Um, hands down, it's so much better screen quality than anything Nintendo has done before, okay? Uh, I would almost put it better quality than most anyone has done before in a handheld. Yeah, this is better quality than we've seen from the 3DS, 3DS, 3DS XL, the PS Vita, the oh, PS yeah. Pro, uh, uh, not PS not Pro, PS Pro. PSP, <laughs> the, um, yeah. the Game Boys. I mean, this is just the best uh, definition that you can get in a handheld. Right. Um, I think the only thing that kind of matches to it would possibly be like the NVIDIA Shield. Uh, they came out with some stuff. But then again, at the same time, guys, it is an NVIDIA Shield. <laughs> okay. They have seen the chip. It is a Maxwell chip. Okay. This is... Is he really rubbing my head with a rock and a leaf wrapped around it? I thought it was a sack. I, it's a rock, man. That's a rock. It doesn't matter. Okay. So... Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to make fun of this while we're doing it because I'm not doing a Let's Play on it right now. But, but yeah. So, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I think it's great. Um, screen quality is good. Battery life, like I said, is great for me. You know, I don't need more than two and a half hours straight of that. And if I do, that usually means I'm going to be pretty still for a long period of time and I can plug the thing up, okay? Now, I do have to tell you... It is worth your investment spending $19.99 or $29.99 if you live in the United States. One for the off-brand for the $19.99, $29.99 for being the officially licensed one. But buy an external charger for your Switch, okay? Because, yes, battery life is not going to be six, seven, eight hours. And if you do like playing handheld as opposed to playing on a TV or if you're a you're, uh, a younger a younger person and the TV that your switch dock is on is the family TV and you can't necessarily play on that all the time then you're definitely gonna want some other type of power and it's only gonna get very annoying for you and you're gonna increase your chances of ruining something if you keep trying to unplug and plug from the switch dock they don't make it very easy you gotta pull open the little door in the back of it every single time and you know just do yourself a favor and just get that get that piece right there now, um, now the downside to that is while you're using it in the, in the Switch's tabletop mode, you can't have it plugged in. <laughs> sure, you can. You gotta uh, you gotta buy the uh, the Hori officially licensed um, oh, tabletop yeah. dock thing, and it's just a little stand that you can sw sit your Switch in, and then it has an opening on the bottom of it. Yeah, that but you can that's do also it. taking away your uh, portability as well because it's more stuff that you gotta carry around. It slaps onto the back of it. They actually thought about it. It's pretty cool. Wow. I will not buy one because I think tabletop is ridiculous for me. Uh, one, because if I'm going to play it, I'm going to be right up on top of it anyway. And so I'm going to be portable or I'm going to play it on my big screen. Yeah, I honestly only foresee myself <clears throat> using the Switch as a portable system when I'm on a trip. When I'm in a plane or in a vehicle, sure. riding along with somebody. Yep. If I'm around other people and we're all going to be playing something together... It's most likely going to be at a house, so I'm probably going to put it into the dock and have it on a TV. Right. Now, guys, one thing just to keep in mind, some games do not let you put it in the dock. 1-2 Switch, by the way, which we bought, we open box, and haven't even freaking played yet. Uh, it's just, that's how it goes, guys. Um, we have it, but it will not let you play it uh, uh, in the dock. You have to have it outside of the dock and in tabletop mode. So you can't have the Joy-Cons docked to it. 
So there are some things where you have to do that. So if you're going to be doing some type of long play sessions, um, you know, like churches or something like that, if you're having a whole bunch of kids over for sleepovers or different things like that, and you're going to be playing a whole bunch of those party games, keep that in mind that uh, it does need to be in tabletop mode. So you might want to invest in one of those little uh, tabletop mode dock things. And speaking of 1-2 Switch, I honestly believe that should have been just included as a, hey, get you used to the to the new console. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it should have been a pack-in, guaranteed. Um, why I bought it? Well, I bought it, guys, because I'm an unboxer. So that's why we bought it. We bought it to have it there. Uh, we will eventually do a, a video on it. But, you know, at the same time, Somehow. I mean, you know, I can already tell you what it is, okay? It's Wii Sports without the fun sports. Um, you get to milk a cow. Um, and Which you get to... For what it's worth. Yeah, and you get to shoot people with fake guns. And there's some other fun stuff in there. Some of it is fun. Some of it is just kind of some of it is cultural i don't see how many people are really going to be like hey you know what i really liked uttering that cow the other day can we play that game again i just don't see that happening too often see honestly one two Here. one two switch is really kind of a a, a warrior type game that oh definitely out. yeah definitely. and uh, i really wish that they would have just waited a little bit longer let mario party come out let uh you know what, what's it called? Um, the the card game Mario Kart. Mario Kart. That, that come out yeah. and you know a couple months after that, release one two Switch, but as a WarioWare game with much more mini games packed into it. I I think I I can't disagree with that more. But I at the same time I'm gonna agree with your original statement of it should have just been a pack in. <laughs> it should have been like, look, this is how you use your Switch. Use this game to learn how to use the Switch because trust me, you will learn how to use your Switch very well with one two Switch. Um, and that might be a reason why you you also uh, are a little more familiar with the Joy-Con individually in your hand yeah. than I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah because I, I purchased it. Um, Joel did not purchase that. And and Couldn't bless you for that. Yeah, bless you for that one, buddy. Uh, <laughs> the things we do for the channel. Um, okay, so uh, as, a, as a console, what do you think of it? I love it. I love it. I really do. That's where it's making up the other two points. From the uh, the seven out of ten that I gave it earlier, mm -hmm. it's it's really nice. I can dock it. And I can use the uh, the charging con uh, controller that that you can uh, you can buy for it, mm -hmm. and it fits really well in my hands, and I, I don't have any latency issues at all. Good enough. Good enough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, console mode is where it fails for me, just because of my TV. Uh, you know, it, it has some issues with it for some odd reason, and, and, you know, that should have been all done through test through and everything, but as a console mode, I see it kind of struggle. Um, it doesn't seem to be able to push the frame rates that it needs to for mine for some odd reason. I don't know why, but, uh, yeah, so that, you know, I give it, I give it pretty low on that one. So, um, you know, I'd, I'd probably give it, you know, I'd probably stick it right back at that four out of 10 thing. It's, it's just not as good as it needs to be for a console for me. Um, and I'm not expecting a lot out of it. You know, it, it is a portable, but if you're going to make a portable hybrid, understand the limitations of what you had in it, and then adjust it accordingly. If you know that your system stutters and has some problems, then just let it play at the frame rate that it plays on the Switch. The problem uh, that, that Nintendo seems to overlook is that most of our TVs, guys, have upscaling and upsampling and all of that stuff built in. Okay? Yeah. 720p still looks remarkably well for what it is on a 4K TV. My TV will try to make up the difference for me. And it does it pretty darn well. I have a really nice Samsung 4K. It does those magical little things in the background and makes a lot of things that are truly inferior look really good. It's amazing. But the when one thing the that system. it can't do it is when the system can't seem yeah. to power its own self. So that's that's the only thing right there. Um, like I said, I see a lot of potential in the, in the console mode. I see it being something that can easily be fixed through some uh, some patches, and, and we'll see about it in the future. Pro controller, what do you think? I love it. Yep, um, me too. I absolutely love it. it I'm just gonna. Well in your hand, the I'm gonna call it. Is... I'm gonna call it a nine out of ten on that one, straight yeah. out. Okay. Uh, Joy cons. Uh, <laughs> once again, by themselves. Just the, by themselves, what it is. The technology inside of Joy Con is phenomenal. It really is. They pack so much stuff into those little suckers. It's it's unbelievable. Um, but no, I, I can't say that I really like the Joy-Cons by themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like the Joy-Cons, guys. Um, 
I like, well, don't, don't get me wrong. I like the Joy-Cons when I have them docked into the actual controller. The, uh, the little Joy-Con grip, I like them when they're there. Um, one thing that I do have, which is a main concern about it, is that that whole huge, amazing rumble thing is a joke. Uh, it barely rumbles. It's more like a small vibration that you get from another room. It's so weak compared to something like the PS4 controller or the Xbox One controller, where when something rumbles, you feel immersed in it. No, I don't care if I can tell that there's two or three ice cubes in a glass if those ice cubes are less than, you know, three centimeters. You know, I mean, that's nothing. I mean, come on. I mean, that's nothing. And once again, I haven't played one two switch, so I really don't know. I'm even talking about. I'm talking about, I'm talking about Zelda. I'm talking about Zelda. It was rumbling pretty well on Zelda. Uh, I mean, it rumbles, but it's not immersive. It's not. It's not the rumbling that they should have been going for, considering, in my opinion, considering everything else that we've had. You, you know, know, I mean, you, I mean, they got to go up against beasts in the industry, like, like the PS4 and the PS3 and the Xbox and the Xbox. 360 and oh my gosh i almost broke my ps4 controller uh and the xbox one controllers those things man you leave them on a table <laughs> and you can hurt your table if somebody like starts shooting you whenever you go to the bathroom in destiny those but things the, fall off the table at the same time though it's um it's not exactly <coughs> trying to to force the same type of uh feel that a uh that a um oh what's the what's the word the uh the rumble pack yeah the, the rumble the rumble controls from PS4 and uh, Xbox One and stuff like that are trying to give you. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to give you enough to know that, you know, something bumped you or something uh, is attacking you, but you're not under constant fire, especially in Zelda. There's yeah you know, yeah I, I understand I understand a lot of that. Get a chance to move around. I do, but but one thing that I don't understand is if I can fall off a 400 foot cliff, which by the way, that's another thing I'm going to talk about, guys. Zelda, I'm, I'm telling you, is the first adult game that Nintendo has ever put out. It is seriously Dark Souls Nintendo. You can die in so many different ways oh, in Zelda Breath of the Wild, and it never explains to you why you are about to die for it. The people watching my stream know, know about most of these ways already. <laughs> and if you haven't, guys, just letting you know, he is doing a Let's Play of Zelda Breath of the Wild, if you're just tuning in now. Um, just please uh, give those a like, uh, watch them, they're pretty interesting, uh, and I'm doing Horizon Zero Dawn, which you can kind of see here, one of the playthroughs that I was doing. Um, yeah, it's just, oh my goodness, guys, like, I can fall from a 300 foot cliff, and when I hit the ground, it goes, Zzz. Now, if I would have done that on the Nintendo, uh, the Wii, with the, uh, with the, with the little Wii pack, it was like, Rawr! and then the PS4 is like, Rawr! And, and and the Switch is... I'm like, the hey, it just seems kind of underwhelming. At the same time, though, the it seems like the amount of rumble that you get yeah. for it mm -hmm. is just enough to to expend your life meter. Because it doesn't rumble for long before your life is completely gone. Yeah, it doesn't. And and I can I, I can see a lot of the parts of, of why they didn't put a lot of rumble. I mean, if you're going to have to you know pay the resources because everything is resources guys if you have to pay the electrical resources to spend some amazing amount of rumble then yeah it's going to drain battery a lot more uh and if you're trying to just make a system that's not going to have to gear up and down all the time depending on what you have it plugged into i can understand that there is a reason why the joy cons can go like what 20 hours they say 30 well, hours yeah Somehow before you have to do it little tiny things go 30 hours it's I because the rumble goes all right, it's because it goes, zzz, and that's it, and that's why, and I can understand that, and I'll live with it. I just don't like it. It's who I am. It's just, it's just what it is for me. Uh, let's see, let's let's move on past some of these. Uh, well, I'll tell you right now, the um, the official backpack uh, for the Nintendo Switch is great, good quality, strong. Looks like it'll um, be able to hold up for years to come. Uh, it's got actually enough storage in it that I have my wife's Switch and my Switch stored in there. My wife's Switch is in the actual um, little Switch handheld case that you got for the uh, collector's edition of Breath of the Wild um, that we open boxed. If you want to see that, just tune into that uh, video. Now you're talking about the uh, Nintendo Switch Messenger Bag, right? Or is this the... Uh, the no, the this is the actual version. backpack. Okay, of okay. It. I have the actual backpack version of it. I cannot speak to the Messenger Bag. I don't have it. Uh, but the backpack has enough space to carry... 
um, the dock, uh, the external plug that goes with the dock, your HDMI cable, a pro controller, six Joy-Cons. Six of them? Six Joy-Cons, not six sets, but six, oh, six Joy-Cons. So three, okay. three sets complete of sets of Joy-Cons. A Switch, <coughs> uh, a separate spot for headphones, um, and then an entire other spot for anything else that you would normally want to put in a backpack, of which I just stuck my wife's Switch in. You know, because if I need to charge it, I can just use a charger, you yeah. know, that we have. So, was, uh, really a lot of space. That really does sound like it has a ton of space. I was kind of looking into getting the, uh, the Nintendo Switch Deluxe Traveler's Case. That's, th from what it, I've heard, it has, yeah. It seems like it has a, a great deal of, um, of padding to support everything. So, mm -hmm. if it gets knocked around, you're not going to get your Switch cracked. Right, yeah, and it's it hardcore. Can fit the whole Switch with mm -hmm. the two Joy-Cons attached to the Switch. Yep. It can fit the dock, it fits the games, it fits oh, the, uh, Oh, my bad, my bad. It does fit, it does fit, uh, eight Joy-Cons, so four sets, because you can have two of them docked to the Switch, and it's uh, big enough to fit it in there. Nice. So, yeah, um, yeah, it, it can do all those types of things. So you can fit all four plus a Pro Controller, so you can just go overboard on this thing. Pretty nice. Yeah, um, but that deluxe hard case, hard. that deluxe case is great, especially if you're going to be doing something where you're trying to put, um... A switch like on a plane and you're not going to use it as carry-on but truthfully guys it's use a, your switch as carry-on use your switch as carry-on don't, don't ever put handling. it no baggage handling is just about as good as ups when it comes to trying to get stuff to survive it just doesn't survive very well um not a not a good day i can't tell you how many times i've gotten stuff from ups fedex and the postal service and there's holes gouged in the backs okay so um uh, let's see uh, moving on from there, Zelda Breath of the Wild. Do you think it's as good as everyone is saying it is? Because almost everyone's giving it a nine out of ten or a ten out of ten. Well, like I told the people in my uh, in my Let's Play, I haven't played a Zelda game since uh, Twilight Princess on the Wii. So, as my knowledge of Zelda titles is limited, it really is, because I didn't play a whole lot on the uh, the NES or the Super Nintendo or even the GameCube. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think it's really great. I'm enjoying the story. I'm enjoying the beautiful world that they've created. Even though I'm not a fan of the uh, the, the art style, I still like the. It's very pleasing. Even though I'm not a fan of it, it's still very pleasing. Mm -hmm. So I'm very. You know why they had to do that art style, right? I, I don't have a clue. They did that art style because they couldn't do the photorealistic. They couldn't pull the pixels. No. Oh. So, so they get around it. They get around it. Yeah, and, and just like you said, I mean, it, it is a beautiful art style. It may not be the art style that we're used to, um, but it is pretty good. So so what, what do you, yeah, uh, number-wise, what do you think? I'd easily give it a 7 or 8 out of 10. I, yeah. I haven't played very far, so I don't know. And I haven't experienced any stuttering or juddering issues. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I really, <coughs> well, I, I really have high hopes for it. Good enough, good enough. Uh, I give it, I, I really do honestly give it a 9 out of 10. Um... I will not let the system hurt the score I give on a game. Okay, I do happen to know that it is not Zelda that is juddering. Okay, it is it is the system that is making that game judder. Uh, this Zelda is the first Zelda that I've had that is 100% what I would call just open world. You go do what you want to do uh, oh, yeah. when you want to do it, and you don't necessarily need to do any of it in the order. Because remember in the first Zelda, yeah, sure, you can go find almost any of the uh, any of the dungeons, but you couldn't do any of the other dungeons. Or you could. You had the right there was very specific. It. There was very specific dungeons that you could do without it. But most dungeons you couldn't make it to the end unless you had something from another dungeon. Yeah. Uh, so it was, you know, it was. Yeah, sure, you can walk around the map all you wanted, but they still railed you in that type of sense. They kept you going down one path. Uh, let's see. Uh, I happen to know you had Bomberman. What do you get, Bomberman? Uh, God, be honest. Uh, gameplay. I love Bomberman. So gameplay, it, it holds up with every other Bomberman that's been out. I really enjoy it. I give it a, uh, a probably a solid seven. Okay. For gameplay. Story, if there's a way <laughs> to skip scenes faster, <laughs> I have not found it. <laughs> I honestly wish the story was not there. It's it's the horrible yeah. reject Saturday morning cartoon. Oh uh, yeah, guys, yeah. Um Bomberman. Um 
I can't rate it. I didn't buy it. Uh, I heard that it was kind of rough before. Um, yeah, from what I've heard, the the first player point of view part of the game is very limited to what it is. Uh, it will be an amazing party game. If you got a lot of people, it plays just as well or if better than uh, most Bombermans ever. Got Chesney to play it and she mm -hmm. liked it. See, there you go. Chesney is uh, Joel's wife, by the way. Uh, let's see. Uh, Not an avid gamer. <laughs> what? Not an avid gamer. Not an avid gamer, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. Power buttons are sometimes beyond Chesney. That's okay, though. Because she cooks good. <laughs> she can make a good burger. There you go. Okay, so uh, let's see. Where else are we going with this? Um, back, on topic. back on topic. Oh, my God. Let's see, let's see. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, have you been able to play any of that? No, I have not been able to play any of it. Uh, I'm so sorry. I, I totally I totally got Joel messed up on that one. Um, I was planning on buying Horizon Zero Dawn through the PlayStation Store, right? But I wanted to do a Let's Play uh, and an open box at the same time, and I was able to buy the Collector's Edition of it. So I bought the Collector's Edition. And a lot of people, as you know, most Collector's Edition just come with the disc. They don't come with a download copy. So Joel does not should, have that. Should, one. Yeah, I mean, and and they should, uh, but Joel doesn't have a copy of that game now. Um, now. I'll eventually get a hold of it and probably do my own little individual stuff and see what happens with it. But right. As far as the gameplay that I've been watching on your Let's Play, I, I've I've really been enjoying it. Oh yeah, I give uh, I give Horizon Zero Dawn a solid right now. From what it is, I'd give it a solid nine out of ten. I really would. Um, it is that good, man. The um, <clears throat> I know sometimes watching me play, it doesn't look like it, but the battling system is so fluid. You yeah, can there almost there do a anything. Lot of, uh, Final Fantasy 15. Oh yeah, oh yeah, guaranteed. Um, your crafting system is very flushed out. Um, just the way that at least at least in the main characters, the. Um, that bow oh looks God. like it's so much fun to use. Yeah, that bow is fun to use if you can actually hit something with it. Oh my goodness, I'm doing so horrible right now in the game. Let's play. Um, but uh, <clears throat> the uh, the facial system, the emotions that they are able to capture in some of these characters are just amazing. Yes, yeah, some of the sub characters still suffer from Play-Doh face. If you don't know what that is, it's where they just didn't seem to put enough um, work into some of the non-important people. Since it wasn't a, a main NPC that you talked to, right, yeah. or another yeah, some of some the, the side quest people, kinda, yeah, yeah, they didn't put a lot, a lot of effort into it. Yeah, so so sometimes when they're trying to convey emotion, they kind of look like uh, Gumby, but, uh, but it's but still most better than Unity good. whenever it came on the go. On the PC. Yeah, and they're missing faces. Right. Yeah. That was. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. That not was good. something to scare the kids at night. Not good, not good. But yeah, so that's that's basically what it is. Um, it is a wonderful game. The crafting system is great. The story is solid. I think it teaches a lot of good points um, about how we shouldn't be just out there judging people for nothing. Uh, you know, listen to someone's full story before you decide to judge them just on something else. Uh, you know, it, it, it bends a lot of those cultural boundaries that a lot of people really seem to want to hold on to, especially in this country. Um, I think it's a great game. I really do. Um, like I said, solid 9 out of 10. Go pick it up if you have a PS4. Uh, it's also one of those games where it's just violent enough. Let me explain that. I mean, obviously, you're hunting dinosaurs. You're killing dinosaurs. Um, that's the violence ex extent of it. It's not like a, a Fallout. Don't get me wrong. Joel and I are avid Fallout players. We're avid. Um, <clears throat> we've, we've played them all. Uh, we've also played all the Skyrims. And as you know, the Skyrims are way milder as far as the language barrier goes than, oh, than the Skyrim, Fallout. You're saying uh, Elder Scrolls series. Elder Scrolls series, Skyrim. right, yeah, the, the Morrow ones and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, there's some stuff in, in the uh, Elder Scrolls series, but it's not half as bad as what's in the Fallouts. And Fallouts were definitely geared to 100% adults. This game, though, uh, I'm pretty sure just got its, its teen rating because of the violence of killing dinosaurs and different things like that. Um, it's a wonderful game. I, I this game I would not feel bad about letting uh, you know ten year olds play. I just wouldn't feel bad about it. Um, I think it's a great game. Uh, but with that, do you have anything else? Uh, no, I, I really don't have too much. Uh, I do want to say sorry about the uh, the desync issues that my uh, my videos have been having. I'm working on fixing that. Hopefully, within the uh, the next couple of videos, you'll notice a big difference. Uh, 
once once again, guys, you got to really give the Switch a a good a good a good try. It it's doing so much that our current you know mainstream systems just can't do. It's trying to bridge the gap between console and and handheld. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna end out really well. What about you? I think it will. I think it will. Um, <clears throat> it's one of those things where, um, you know, I mean, we're early adopters, and uh, let's yeah, players are always gonna be early adopters. That's that's yeah, how we get our first. fans. Yep, yep. We get to see it first. We get to appreciate it if it's awesome. We get to live with it until it is awesome. And I believe, <laughs> I believe that Nintendo is going to make this one awesome. Uh, I don't believe that they cannot. You know, you get my point? I, I really honestly think that... Yeah, I mean, between now and Christmas when a ton of people are going to be wanting a new console or some sort of new experience, yeah. I'm fairly certain we're going to come up with uh, several firmware updates that are going to change a lot of the user interface and experience. Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, uh, as far as the channel goes, guys, you're going to notice over the next couple of days, and I'm really sorry about this, but probably for the next week, you will not see any um, Let's Plays from Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, not trying to pull any sympathy or anything like that, but I was in the hospital for the last two days. Uh, if you have been following some of my Let's Plays, you will notice that uh, that I said that I was trying to get over some stuff. Uh, unfortunately, it dropped my blood pressure last night to like 70 over 40, and I almost stroked out. Not last night, two nights ago. And so I've been in the hospital for two days recovering, and I have not fully recovered yet. So if I feel up to it, there will be a video. If not, don't hang me for it. Uh, I will be guaranteed back on uh, as long as I have a pulse. <laughs> this coming um, Saturday so we can get this Sunday video out for you. Um, that's why this one's coming out so late tonight. We're going to put this one out tomorrow to kind of make up for my uh, Let's Play not being there. Um, tomorrow being Monday. Tomorrow being Monday. That is correct. We're filming, we are doing this one on Sunday. Normally we will do this Saturday night. Uh, so Saturday you will see Joel's Let's Play of whatever Let's Play he's doing at that time. It won't always be Zelda. Um, and then, uh, and then on Sunday you will get the candidates, um, and, and we will have our Sunday off because we will have filmed this, uh, Saturday night. Oh, I had a, a question I'd want to ask. Yeah. Are we going to be doing some sort of a co-op Let's Play through, uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, or is that going to be just a, a total individual play thing? Um, you know what? I will be honest with you. If you want to do that and we can get the co-op to actually work correctly, and I can get your voice over IP working right. Yeah. So that you come up, you know, and I have you recorded correctly. Then we will do a let's play on that. If not, it's just going to be me yelling at you. And then not being able to hear you. Which could be pretty funny. But at the same time, probably not half as productive. So uh, we will either be doing a co-op let's play. Or we will each be doing a let's play. Where Joel chooses one of the options. And I choose one of the options. And we will always just choose that option so you can see exactly where that trail goes. Yeah. Like right now, I'm doing a Let's Play where I'm only choosing the kind love options in yeah, Horizon right. Zero Dawn. And Joel will probably do the intellect options. Yeah, I'll go ahead and tell everybody. If I ever do a Let's Play on Horizon Zero Dawn, which probably will have been <laughs> it's going to be the intellect option. Yeah. I would have knocked the kid's rock out of his hand. Right, yeah. <laughs> I, I was really tempted to knock the kid with the rock. But uh, with that, guys, I... I love all y'all. You know, y'all are the best. Um, my name is AJ. This is... This is Joel. And this has been Forever Your Guru. Thank you so much, guys.